police officer for 22 years and is currently assigned to be a social media officer working in the Toronto Police Services Corporate Communication Office. He volunteered as a social media advisor for Community Red Cross Operators, a partnership with police and media nationality in the USA and internationally. Scott is a serving board member on the Spanish TV Education Network. Communities in Mexican Valley, Islamic, and Imperial Imperial Bank and Disabilities Association. Scott, Scott here started his career in 1990 <laughs> with a few regional police contractors in Toronto Police Service in 2002. He has experience in community policing, schools, homicide squad, intelligence unit, street crime unit, and crime stoppers programs. Thank you. Scott's passion is working with and community building as well as BMX bikes. He's been long involved with these initiatives and celebrates them on social media for success and safety. He is also passionate about further investigations and prevention efforts for missing and murdered Native women. <laughs> Thanks a lot, you guys. Nice to be here. Thanks for the nice introduction. Uh, the reason why I was standing up here uh, when these guys introduced me is uh, I've got a microphone clip on here and we're live streaming to YouTube right now. <laughs> so say hi to YouTube. <laughs> All right. So do you guys? All right, there you go. So this is, uh, I'm just going to go uh, on here to show you exactly who I am and what we're going to do here today. I hope you guys want to have some fun. You guys want to have some fun? Uh, we're, here for, we're here for about an hour, and I love doing these presentations. I love having fun, and I don't get out enough of, to do these. So my goal here today is to have a dialogue with you guys about social media. Um, my, my official job is Toronto Police Social Media Officer. So I've been a cop for a long time, as you heard, and uh, my office is downtown Toronto in Toronto Police Headquarters in the Corporate Communications Office. And uh, I runs the Toronto Police website. So all of the little icons on the top there for Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Google Plus on the Toronto Police website, that's my job. I, I operate those things. So it's uh, quite a busy place, and I, uh, it doesn't work if we're putting information up here and we want to work kind of together if the community that we're trying to serve isn't working with us. So that's why it's really important for us to do these talks. I also really like to uh, show you some real stuff that's happening on social media. Um, I call my talk Success and Safety because I love social media, I think it's great. And if we use it right, we can be really successful with it and we can use it as a safety tool and um, we can have a lot of fun with it. But if we use it wrong, we can get ourselves into a lot of trouble, uh, both right now and later on when we're trying to get a job and stuff like that. Uh, people do background checks on you, whether you know they're doing it or not and they do check out this type of stuff. So I wanna make sure that your best way to make sure that nothing bad happens to you is not to post anything bad in the first place. So, and, but you know as well as I know, people post things bad. Um, so I'm gonna show you some examples of that. Uh, near the end, we're gonna do a live demonstration about privacy settings. If anybody here uh, wants to get up and log into their Facebook account, while we're on YouTube, uh, we're, we're going to do that near the end. <laughs> so, so, anyway, show of hands, you guys. Um, if you saw me when I was up there, if I I took a picture of the two gentlemen introducing me, and. I could take out my phone right now that I took that picture on and I could post it on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram it or Snapchat or, or do whatever I wanted and put the link for the video out and I could send this around the world, right? Right now, right now we've probably got zero people watching the YouTube video because I never I never posted anything that I was going to do this. The only person that I told that I was going to do this 
was the two guys introducing me, your principal, and I texted my son, who's the head of the AV club in grade 10 at his school. <laughs> and uh, he's at home sick today. So I texted him, I said, I'm about to go live on YouTube. <laughs> because he's really good at live streaming and stuff like that. So those are the only people that know it. So why would we want to live stream this onto YouTube then? Right? You know what? I told one other person, I told somebody in my office if they wanted to watch, they could, they could check it out. Also, we might say some stuff and do some stuff here that you might want to come back and check out and say, how did that happen? So you guys can re-look at it. Uh, we might say or do some stuff where you might want to show it to your mom and dad or little brother or little sister or something at home and say, hey, we had this cop that came in. This is what he said. Can you check it out? And you guys can go check it out and show them. That's why we're doing it. We're just trying to share the good. So that's social media for success. Also, here's the safety piece. When we, as Toronto Police, um, when we have anything that's going on and we want to uh, tell the public about it, the first place where we put it um, is on Twitter. How many people here have a Twitter account? <laughs> All right. Um, how many people here have an Instagram account? All right. <laughs> how many people here, just for the record, when they about Twitter, there was probably about less than a quarter of the hands went up. Instagram was probably about a third of, of the group here. And you guys are grade 9, 10, 11, and 12, right? Yep, so the auditorium's full here. Um, how many people use Snapchat? <laughs> okay, looks like we got another third here. How many people here go on YouTube? Okay, that was about three quarters of the room said they went on YouTube. Here's a, how many people here have a Facebook account? Okay, looks like we got about a third of the room here that are actually saying they got a Facebook account. Okay, that means probably there's another third that didn't put their hands up. Are you guys with me there? So. Essentially, there's a whole bunch of platforms out there. News seems to break on Twitter. So when we put information out onto Twitter, it goes out and it goes right to our website. So if something were to happen in the school here right now, I'm a police officer, I'm here, and I'm seeing what's happening and we need a, an emergency response or there'd be an ambulance or something like that. If I were to tweet from this phone, it would go right to the website there automatically and it would say basically uh, we need some help or something like that here if I, if I was doing it. People would listen to it and is that the best way to notify authorities? It's not the best way. What's the best way quickest if you're having an emergency? 911 is still the best way. If it's a non-emergency, what's the best way to do it? Call the non-emergency Toronto Police number. It's 416-808-2222. But if it's an emergency, call 911. But if, somebody, if something were to happen at your school, and I've seen it at, at this school, I've seen it at many other schools, when there's something like a lockdown or a hold and secure that happens, everybody starts posting stuff on social media about it. Right? Sometimes the kids in the school, um, lots of times parents, the media are posting things. So what we're doing officially is when we're managing all that information, we're posting it onto Twitter. And if it's a serious situation, we'll also post it onto Facebook and Instagram. But Twitter's the primarily one we, we go to. And it comes right onto the front page of the website and it goes right there. So if you click on view more here, this is everything that the Toronto Police, whether it be the Operations Center or my office, Corporate Communications, or any of the other police officers or civilian members of Toronto Police, um, anything that they're putting onto Twitter now is all programmed to go into the website. So it could be something like, hey, I'm doing a school presentation. I could put a picture up of the two guys there that introduced me, and I could put a link to watch on YouTube. 
it's going right to the front page of the Toronto Police website. So I call that success. Posting for success, we're trying to engage people and, and you know, let each other know that we're human beings and we care and we want to work together. And if it's a safety message, boom, it's the same place you go. Just go to the Toronto Police website, Google the Toronto Police website, go there. No matter who is posting the post from Toronto Police, it's going to go on, on to there. So if I were to post the post of the two gentlemen that introduced me, what's the first thing I need to do? Should I ask them? Yeah? So, hey guys, is it okay if I post your picture? Yeah, okay, they both said yes, okay? I really, really, really want you guys to do that. Get in the habit before you post, if you got a really good picture of somebody, it's great to say, hey, is it okay to post your picture and explain the whole context? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually go to my Twitter account. Uh, I'm Graffiti BMX Cop. And I am actually going to post something, if my phone will work here. So I could go on to the Toronto Police account, the official one, it's got quite a lot of followers. I'm gonna go on to my individual one, which is Graffiti BMX Cop, uh, and it will still go into here, and I'm gonna say, thank you. Thank you, Kipling. Collegiate for uh, talking success and safety on social media. And I'm going to go watch and I'm going to put the link youtube.com. Oops autocorrect, youtube.com forward slash graffiti BMX cop. Now I'm going to add the picture of these guys. And I'm actually going to put a few pictures on. I took a picture of your sign out front with the, had your Twitter name on it. And it's got these guys on there. And watch youtube.com, graffiti BMX Cup. Thanks, Kipping Collegiate. Now, can I tag Kipping Collegiate? What is it? TDSB Kipling. TDSB. I tag the main account. And I'm going to tag the people in my office. All right, it's out. How many people potentially are going to see that picture? How many people are looking at that right now on their phone? One, two, three, four. It's on, uh, I'll show you where it is. I'm just waiting for it to come into the loop here on the, uh, You guys are looking at it, but it's not coming up on here. That's kind of weird. There we go. There you go. So it went out on my Twitter account. I'm actually logged in right now as Toronto Police on Twitter. So if you go, if I went on here and I clicked the like button and I retweeted that, we've really upped the ante now because we're on a live feed and whatever we say has just been uh, retweeted to 173,000 people. Pretty powerful, pretty fast, right? 
So anybody that's out there really in the whole world could be watching what we're doing right here. Now, do you have that same power from, from your bedroom? You got that same power with a phone anywhere where, where we are. So we have to really, really think about using all that response. So I'm just going into the uh, website feed here on the Toronto Police, and I'm hoping it's going to work. It hasn't picked it up yet on our website feed, but there's another there's another officer up there, uh, S Staff Sergeant Andrew Eklund. He's just tweeted, so this is going to be on my Christmas tree, <laughs> and he put that out. So you might ask, why, why are the police officers putting what's going to be on their Christmas tree? Why are we putting out things like that? It's because we're trying to engage, we're trying to engage with everybody here about success. And if we need to get a safety message out, everybody's used to going to the same page to go and get the safety message. Does that make sense? Cool. So that's how it all works. Um, on Instagram, what's on our Instagram? If you click on uh, Toronto Police Instagram account, 190. I don't know if you remember last week or you heard on the news that one of our police dogs named Lonka, somebody tried to hurt him when they're there was an arrest going on for an illegal gaming house and tried to hit him with a big machete. And he got stitches. He's going to be okay. But it kind of got, it was all out on the news. Somebody sent in treats for Lanka. <laughs> so we took a picture of it and we put it out on, on there. We put a lot of stuff out. There's Lanka. He's doing all right. And we, we put lots and lots of stuff like that out there. If you guys want, if there's some type of uh, surveillance or anything like that that's going out, it goes out on all of these channels as well. If there's pictures or videos, we try and post them out there. If you're to post anything on social media and reply saying, oh, I know who that guy is or something like that, that's a public place, so if you want to actually notify somebody, you should probably uh, either direct message us or private messages on, on one of those accounts. The absolute best way is just to call the non-emergency police number to reach us. It's still the best way is calling on the phone. Um, we'll see it the quickest, and it'll be the most uh, kind of private for you. And if you need to remain anonymous, you can always uh, give Crime Stoppers a call. You heard in the introduction that I work with Crime Stoppers programs. This is the Toronto Crime Stoppers website. If you submit a tip on this website, it uh, automatically goes to the community-run Crime Stoppers program. Your anonymity is protected by case law of the Supreme Court. Okay, so you don't have to worry about anybody knowing your name if you submit a tip uh, on here that way. So what I'd like to do is, uh, I'd really like to show some live demos about settings on your social media accounts. They seem to be the most important uh, thing that a lot of people don't really understand. So is there anybody here that would volunteer to come up and log into their Facebook? <laughs> you know? Anybody? Who's pointing over there? Anybody? Yeah, the guy in the middle? All right, come on up. Which guy's coming up? Need one volunteer. Anybody? You guys want to think about it for a bit? Okay, the guy with the hand up back there. Come on up. Come on up. <laughs> Woo 
I feel like it's the price is right. Come on down. All right, what's your name? <laughs> Olivia? How you doing, Olivia? It's Olivia. All right, we got Olivia here. Olivia's going to log into his Facebook. While he's logging in, how many people here are friends with Olivia on Facebook? <laughs> None of them on Facebook. None of them on Facebook? No, no, Snapchat and Instagram. They're all Snapchat and Instagram. That's what he's saying. How many people have their Facebook link to their Instagram? Instagram like the Facebook. Nobody? All right. Yeah, let's log in. All right, as soon as you get in, you can sit down, Olivia. I won't embarrass you, I promise you. He's, he's a little bit kind of sketchy here. He's checking. He's checking on his phone. If there's anything bad on there, because <laughs> he's a little bit worried about what might pop up. I'm sorry, hold on. What the hell? Delete <laughs> that. He just deleted something. <laughs> Why are you late? Well, because we're just trying to figure all this out. A lot of people watching. It's all good. I won't. I won't embarrass you, buddy. Please don't. I won't. I promise. Nothing to be worried about. I'll take it right off Bro, if it's I'll bad. See, I'll see. I'm locking out. Yeah. All right. Are you doing? Press enter. There you go. That's good to see you like that. I won't embarrass you, I promise you. You can sit down, Olivia. Don't, don't, don't test Where it. Raise it. Why are you messing me? <laughs> Hang on, let me see. Just a sec here. Why is that messing me? Why are you waiting? No, you see when that. You guys see when that happened. Six mad messaging me right now. You can you can stay here to live here. Okay. Why are we doing this? No, no. You can sit down, Olivia. I promise I won't embarrass you. Olivia, I promise I won't embarrass you. Okay, why did we just do all that? <laughs> Yo. <laughs> okay. When you guys are messaging, when you got I'm getting to a to a pretty crazy point here. When you guys are messaging like this, even if it's private, how many people have their settings set to allow groups? Okay, watch this. I'm gonna I'm gonna flip on to Twitter now. We're logged into Toronto Police Twitter. Remember that, right? Twitter. There we go. So we're on Toronto Police. If you don't go, we're on Twitter and Facebook works similar. You can allow people into group chats or you can disallow people into your group chats. How many people have thought they're doing a private chat on whatever platform and somebody invites somebody else in and you don't even know they're there? Because check this out. On the Toronto Police Twitter account, we got direct messages open. Yeah. 
these guys are direct messaging right into the trauma police inbox. <laughs> Yesterday, listen to this, you guys. I, got, I can't show it because it's inappropriate. Yesterday, I was following a chat for two weeks that was coming into my Toronto Police inbox. For two weeks. And it's got about seven or eight people that are on this chat. And they're all talking in a sexual tone with each other. And they're all your age. All right? Finally, something was said that was just completely offside. And I replied from the Toronto Police account on direct message saying, really? With a question mark? Everybody in the group went, whoosh, they were gone. The one person that it was being said about, or had said the really, really inappropriate thing was a girl. And what did she write? OMG in the biggest letters she could write. She was completely, completely unaware that the Toronto police have been added into the group chat. Okay? I really, really can't stress this enough that when you go into your settings, so um, I'm on Twitter right now. We're going to go back uh, to our Facebook account, all right? When you go into settings on Twitter, you want to click on security and privacy. I'm not saying here to protect your tweets or anything like that. What you just saw was on direct message. It's supposed to be private. Um, if you do want to protect your tweets, I know, uh, I think one of uh, one of the teachers that have organized this event, I think on her account, you guys, her name gets tagged a lot, so I clicked on it and she had a protected account. It's all good if you want a protected account. Right here, you got your tweet privacy. If you want a protected account, you, t you click on protect your tweets. It says add a location to my tweets. Lots of times you're adding a location on your tweets if that's turned on you do, and you don't even know it. So if you want to go back in and you're going to say, you know what, I really don't want my location to go on my tweets all the time, you really need to look at your phone, the settings on the phone, and disable the location settings on your phone. That's step number one. On the actual app, you need to come in here and say, uh, where it says, add a location to my tweets, you need to uncheck that button. Not just uncheck it. As soon as you uncheck something, you got to go to the bottom and you got to hit save changes. And when you hit save changes, it's going to ask you to re-put your password in. Now, this one uh, right here, discoverability. How do you want people to be able to find me? Um, if you don't want to have people found by your email address or by a phone number, make sure that it's unchecked there. Okay? Um, this whole Taylor Twitter based on my recent website visits, um, it's fine to do it, but what you're doing is you're giving all your information about your habits to marketers, basically. So, you, you know, just be aware of it. If you want it on or off, that's where you can, uh, that's where you can uh, change it. See right here where it says Twitter for Teams? Really take a good look at that because that's what I just showed you allow anyone to add me to their team, allow only people I follow to add me to their team, do not allow anybody to add me to their team. I've got the setting that says allow anyone to add me to their team. So all these people that are out there, somebody that's in those direct message conversation, those private inbox conversation, is not liking what's being said, and what they're doing is they're adding the Toronto Police account. And I'm seeing all this stuff, and eventually I'm trying to figure out if anybody's being victimized or anybody needs help, and I'm reaching out to them. But the other people that are in the group are talking like the cops aren't even there. So you really, really, really need to pay attention to this stuff. If you're on uh, Instagram, 
and you're using direct chats on there, same thing applies. Snapchat, how many people think that when you do your picture, it goes away? It never goes away. It's always searchable, okay? It's always searchable, and if we needed, if something happened and we needed to do a search warrant, we could go and get that information as the police. Yeah, how many people didn't know that? Okay, it's always there, it's always there. This, the last one right here is, you see where it says direct messages? The last little section on there says, don't allow anyone to add me to groups. Of anybody adding you to a group, then make sure you tick that off and hit the save button and add your password in. So how many people knew that? How many people didn't know that? Okay, I'm seeing a few hands up. Is that useful information for you? Okay, the reason I'm telling you this is I don't want anybody to be embarrassed. But more importantly, I really, really, really want you to think about who is seeing something that you're sending, even if it's a direct message. Because right now, what are we doing? We're live streaming to YouTube, right? When, when somebody got up in the morning that was doing those direct messages on the Toronto Police account, did they think that we were gonna be standing live to YouTube at Kipling Collegiate? No, so the only way to stop that and protect your privacy because anybody anywhere in the world could take that and use it, is to be very, very careful about what you post. So I wouldn't post anything that you wouldn't want your parents to see, your teachers to see, or somebody that you're going to get a job your dreams, or trying to get into the educational college or university your dreams. If you don't want those people to see it, okay? Having said that, I'm a guy that loves social media for the good. So just keep it, keep it good. Now, getting back to our friend here. Oh my gosh, he logged out. <laughs> hey, Delivio, you want to log back in? Where'd he go? Delivio, I need you to log back in, mister. <laughs> Does anybody else want to log in? I think Delivio chickened out. <laughs> you want to log in? No? Anybody? Anybody want to log in to Facebook? What's that? I'm just going to show the mini feed, and I'm going to do privacy settings. Nobody will get embarrassed. Anybody? It's kind of good that Delivio chickened out, actually. So Delivio logged himself out from his phone. That's all good. Just the fact that Delivio say hi guys just the fact that the livio said you know what first off he was up here and he was like oh i want to check my phone i want to check my phone make sure there's nothing bad then he actually chickened out because he had a bit of a pause there and he like logged himself right out because he wasn't sure if there's anything bad on there right so what i'm the whole message here is i want you to take some proactive steps tonight if there's anything bad that you got on your on your sites, take it down. Okay. Also, I just logged in. If you guys want to, uh... yeah, you can add me if you want. Okay. So that's my Facebook profile, Scott Mills. <laughs> out of me and just be careful because there's a few Scott Millses out there 
So when a lot of people added me, which they have, when I scroll through my mini feed here, if somebody's added me and they've posted something really, really inappropriate, it's coming right to my eyes, right? And so the kind of question right at the front is, what do you do with it? What I do with it is I reach out to the person and I send them a private message and I say, here's the reasons why you might not want to post that. And nearly every single time they remove the post because they forget. So unless it's like something really, really terrible and really, really serious, um, I'm just sending people messages, giving them uh, kind of a reminder. So I just really want you to know that you can't control what friends add who. Okay, then when you get into your privacy settings here, uh, 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 <laughs> so we're friends now. <laughs> so after everything we've said there's a video of somebody in the library and what's his name <laughs> likes your profile Sorry. <laughs> Whoa, it's going crazy. So the bottom line is whoever, whoever posted the video in the library, did they ask the people in the video if they could post a video? Probably not, right? So it's almost like we're under surveillance wherever we go, right? So again, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to, I'm trying to get you guys to think because it does get exciting and you're in the moment and everybody uses their phones and they post a video. If the video's bad, it's gonna come back. I'm recently working on a video that was posted by somebody in the community of a police officer at a liquor store. I don't know if you guys saw it. That all started on somebody's Facebook profile. And I think that the people had a problem that were posting it. They had a problem with the officer arresting somebody under the Trespass Act. And it's a 16 minute long video. Because of what was posted on there, and there were some people that were interfering with the arrest. Now the people that were interfering are actually facing criminal charges from what was on the video. You know, so the lesson, I guess, is anything that gets posted up on the internet, even if it's on your profile, can become a big deal really fast, okay? So, here's a, here's what, we have 15 more minutes. I really wanna go through these settings with you. I'm doing it on Facebook because <laughs> when you go do your settings, you want to go and click settings from the drop down on the right hand side, that drop down arrow. When you go, <laughs> you guys are killing me here. <sighs> All right. Uh. 
All right, there's your settings. Here's some important stuff. Most of the settings on Instagram or Facebook, uh, Twitter, all that, Snapchat, they're all there. You just got to go through them. Right here where it says privacy. Who can see my stuff? It's automatically set to public. If you don't want the public to see it, bring it down to friends. As you go down here, who can contact you? I've got it so everyone can. If you don't want everyone to it, bring it down. Who can look you up? I've got everyone. If you don't want everyone, bring it down. Right here where it says, do you want search engines outside of Facebook to link to your profile? I've got it clicked yes. If you don't want external search engines to link to your Facebook profile, you got to click no. Most people don't realize that you have to go in there and click no. That's for people that are over 18. So just a show of hands, how many people signed up for Facebook and put a birthday that made them older than 18? Yeah. If you put a birthday older than 18 and you didn't go change that setting, everything that you put up on your Facebook is subject to going out onto search engines, which makes it really easy for anyone to find anything that you've uh, really posted up there. So make sure you switch those settings. Well, you guys are, uh, you guys are active. Holy moly. How many people know what facial recognition software is? <laughs> you guys are killing me. You guys are killing me. I'm gonna have to turn my notifications off. I'm glad you guys are liking everything. So facial recognition software, if you, if you go traveling in the United States, the Facebook settings for facial recognition software are on there. So what that means is somebody took a picture like I took up here and they post it onto Facebook and you haven't opted out from facial recognition software in the settings on Facebook, it picks up your facial features and compares it to your own facial features off your account, and it can actually associate you to your name. It's disengaged here in Canada, um, because I think there's some issues with the privacy commissioner here in Canada, and they've disengaged that function. So where you find that is you go, you click on the down thing right here, you go to settings, and when you get into the settings, <laughs> you guys are killing me. <laughs> I'm gonna actually have to turn off notifications here. I, on the settings, if you go on the timeline and tagging right here, the very last setting right here, where it says, who sees tag suggestions when photos that look like you are uploaded? It's not yet available. If you have a United States friend or somebody in another country, not just the United States, chances are that that is on. So if you wanna opt out of facial recognition, you gotta go into that. And a couple more things that are really, really important on here are <laughs> I could just go turn these off, but it's kind of making my point, you guys. There's a lot of engagement on social media. A lot of people. This is how fast it moves. This is what I do every day. <laughs> Holy moly. All right, right here, you guys. Timeline and tagging. Oh, shoot. 
missed it. Timeline and tagging settings right here. When you go, can you guys stop sending me messages for one sec? Okay, when you go into these settings right here, when you go over here to settings, just list up for a sec, guys. This is pretty important. Right here, where it says, who can see things on my timeline? Where it says everyone, you probably want to make it so it's just friends. Who can see what others post on your timeline? Everyone, you probably want to put it so it's just friends. Right here, how can I manage tags, people add, and tagging suggestions? You see where that says it's off? Right there, it's automatically disabled. You want to go in there and you want to hit enabled. Okay, because you want to be able to get a notification before it goes live on your wall. Okay? As you scroll down there, this is the, see this thing right here about review posts, friends tag you in before they appear on your timeline? The one I just showed you is for actually tagging in pictures. This one is for anybody that tags you to put it on your time, timeline. So I really highly suggest that you go to that section right there and you go down to the timeline and you just enable that feature. Any other social media platform that's, that's got settings like that, go in there and do a settings check. We only got about 10 minutes left. Every time I do one of these presentations, you guys are a lot of fun. I know Sometimes teachers, when I present, they go, what's he doing? There's a lot of kind of distractions on the screen and stuff like that. That's what social media is. And I don't, I don't mind it that you guys are engaging with me because I know when I leave, we'll still be engaged. And if I need you guys for anything or you need us, you're going to be able to reach us really quick. So... One thing that's really near and dear to my heart, and I was wondering if you guys could help me with here when I end. I'm just gonna go, uh, we're live streaming, so I'm just gonna go on to YouTube. I started, I've got over 5,000 videos on YouTube. If you go to YouTube and you search for three missing teens, and you type in three missing teens to Toronto, these, these kids have been missing for 10 years. I'm not gonna play sound on this video, but I'm gonna explain to you what's going on in this video. Guys, I was a school cop in downtown Toronto 10 years ago when these three kids went missing. That's uh, Jackie Lee. That's Eva Hall. That's Kevin Lim. This is a little statue that we made for them. It's in front of a police station down in the exhibition grounds. It's got their picture on it. I'm just going to wait till it gets to a big picture here of the their three faces and I'm going to stop it. August 14th, 2008, they went missing. There's Eva, Jackie, and Kevin. Eva was a student in my school and we lost her. We haven't found her. 
These three kids are the reason I, as a cop, 10 years ago starting, started to use social media because I wanted to actually reach out and try and connect with people like we're doing here today and try and get help. So if you guys feel like it, I'm going to share this video onto my Facebook. I know you guys have been really active on my Facebook. If you guys feel like sharing it, okay. If you just want to watch it, it's 10 minutes long. It tells the story of the, of the kids. And if you have any information or you think you know anybody that's got any information, you can either contact me directly or you can submit anonymous tips into Crime Stoppers. Their mom just called me last week. Why did she call me? She's watching all the comments on the YouTube videos. And she's looking for any piece of clue or evidence where she might be able to help find, uh, find the kids. They've been missing for 10 years since 2000, uh, 2008. So anyway, uh, they were 15 and 16 when they went missing. What's that? Are they related? Uh, they were friends. And they're related to a, a boy by the name of Philip Sitt that was found murdered up in York region. So. We're almost done. We got about two minutes, you guys. I've really enjoyed talking with you. I got to ask you this. How many people tonight are going to go home and look at their social media accounts and change settings? And show of hands? Yeah. Okay. The last thing I'm going to say, guys, is just please, please, whatever you post on social media, make sure that it's the stuff that you want somebody that's going to hire you in the future to see. Okay? And be good to each other. Thanks a lot. Wow. <laughs>